is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i'm go pony and today we are in the new 2020 lexus is 300 f sport courtesy of bobby ray hall lexus in mechanicsburg pa and so i wanted to check this one out of course because of its distinctive and attractive looks first and foremost also above average reliability ratings by consumer reports that's always a plus but the main reason i always like checking out any f sport by lexus is because the seats are the most comfortable seats known to man in existence today. And so without going into too much detail, I have a very bad back and these seats really are the only seats to make me 100% completely comfortable. And I'll get more into that as we go. But what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be two different configurations for the 2020 IS300 F Sport. There is a rear wheel drive variant starting at $41,755. Then you have the all-wheel drive starting at $43,805 and so I broke the pricing down that way because actually depending on what configuration that you go with the power plant is actually going to be a little bit different for instance if you go with that rear wheel drive configuration you will find a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder putting out 241 horsepower 258 pound-feet of torque of course center rear wheels through an eight-speed automatic with paddle shifters and that zero to 60 time for that setup comes in at approximately six point nine seconds top speed 143 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 21 city 30 on the highway but so then there is that all-wheel drive configuration that what we have today powering this particular configuration is going to be a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 big difference there putting out 260 horsepower 236 pound feet of torque sent to all four wheels through a six speed automatic with paddle shifters and so eight speed versus six speed automatic another big difference top speed coming in at 130 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 19 in the city 26 on the highway so a lot of differences just between the rear wheel drive versus all wheel drive so i did want to mention all of that but so then before we do any kind of paddle shifter test which of course we will do or acceleration test i did want to mention the drive modes that drive mode button is located directly behind the shifter there and it is actually a drive mode dial but nonetheless those drive modes will include normal eco and sport and they will adjust things like the shift points the throttle response and the steering sensitivity and i did want to mention there is also a snow mode just behind that circular dial as well for a little bit of extra traction for you here in pennsylvania because we do get snow quite often here so that's always nice for a little extra traction but nonetheless let's go ahead and turn it into sport driving mode there first thing i noticed actually is it did change the gauge configuration did change the gauge setup i guess the gauge colors really to be specific but it did also immediately downshift for me holding the rpms at a much higher level it's also going to adjust the throttle sensitivity and the steering sensitivity as well all in all that is typically the driving mode i prefer on most vehicles so i'm just going to leave it in there and to put it in full manual shift mode in the is what you want to do is slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is going to give me full control over the shifting here so what do you say let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration here nothing too crazy but let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here here we go actually not too bad not the very quickest paddle shifters i've ever tested but definitely a quick reaction time i'm kind of impressed there in the paddle shifters they do feel very high quality as well i always like to point that out because a lot of times you'll find cheaper feeling plastic paddle shifters but these feel pretty nice so i do like the paddle shifter setup too but all in all to give control back to the is all you need to do is simply slide the shifter to the right there and that gives control back to the is 300 f sport here and I do think you guys know what we have to do next. Let's do a quick little acceleration with the car having full control. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. And there we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, buddy. Whew, I like the sound. That was nice. Definitely no issues with any slack on the acceleration there. Certainly not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway either. That was a decent acceleration. It is a kind of a linear acceleration too. And most NA engines aren't gonna give you that, but I like it. Definitely a nice smooth acceleration, I think is the best way to describe that. That was nice. But so then to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.1 inch ventilated front discs with four 
piston front calipers. In the back, you're gonna have 12.2 inch ventilated rear discs with dual piston rear calipers. And as far as the braking feel goes, it's felt perfectly fine for me today as I'm coming up on a right turn here. Definitely no issues with brake pedal delay or anything like that. So that is certainly on point. Touching on suspension and handling then, up front you're gonna have an F-Sport tuned independent double wishbone front suspension with coil springs, shock absorbers, and a stabilizer bar. The rest of that pretty much as expected, but F-Sport tuned suspension. That is definitely gonna give you crisper handling as opposed to the standard IS300 without the F-Sport, so that's a plus as well. In the back, F-Sport tuned independent multi-link rear suspension. Again, coil spring, shock absorbers, and a stabilizer bar. Now I did wanna mention an option for the suspension in case you were interested. There is F-Sport lowering springs available from the factory for an additional $660. That of course is going to give you increased handling, a little bit firmer of a ride, but more so on the increased handling side of things. So that's a plus. Of course, to go along with that, it's also going to provide you a lower ride height. So it's gonna eliminate some of that wheel gaps. That's always a plus too. So better looks, better handling, little firmer ride. So that's the trade-off, I guess, but that's there for you if you wanted it. But overall, steering feel is perfectly fine. Definitely a heavier weighted steering wheel. I would say probably heavier than the Audi A3 I recently test drove. So that is definitely a plus, at least in my book. Ride quality has been perfectly fine. And typically Lexus does an amazing job with ride quality. So once again, very much so on point. As far as cabin noise goes, if I'm being honest, I wouldn't say it's quite as quiet as an Audi, but it's certainly not bad either. It is a Lexus, so cabin noise is certainly for the most part going to be on point. I'm just saying, just got done reviewing the Audi, so I have it fresh in my mind. And that is a slightly quieter cabin, if it means anything to you at least, than the, than the IS300 that we have here today. But then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back. Definitely no issues there. And usually with sedans, you're not gonna have any issues. But overall, a very nice ride, very nice steering feel. And I think what honestly makes it even better is you can throw this thing around the turns on the back roads because these seats are bolstered beautifully. And that is any F-Sport seat that you go with so that is once again my favorite part about the is 300 but i'll touch on that in a little bit let's now make our way to the exterior of this beautiful 2020 lexus is 300 f sport all right so now making our way to the exterior let me give you guys a little flash from the past here this is the old lexus is 300 also known as the toyota alteza in japan but this is where the is 300 originated and then today we have this, the 2020 Lexus IS300 F Sport. So it certainly has come a long way, although that Toyota Alteza is certainly a legend in its own rights. But let's go ahead and start up front on this one. Of course, you have that Lexus spindle front grille with the F Sport specific front fascia really differentiating itself from the non F Sport trim levels. And it does that by adding gloss black accents surrounding the lower air curtains. Also gloss black accents found within the bottom corners of that spindle grille as well, really making it a much more more aggressive appearance, a much better look to it, honestly. To the sides, LED headlights across the board will come standard with LED daytime running lights. This headlights, of course, coming with the automatic feature as well, meaning when it starts to get dark out, they will turn on automatically for you there, so you never have to worry about that. Did want to also mention there is optional triple beam LED headlights that go for an additional $1,160 if you wanted them. Also, an adaptive front lighting system adds an additional $300, and essentially what that will do is when you're going around a bend at night, perhaps on the back roads, those headlights will swivel based on your steering angle, better help illuminating what is around the corner, so you're less likely to hit a deer or a squirrel or whatever is possibly in the road. So that's definitely a safety feature in itself. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side on this one. First thing that always pops out to me is the F-Sport badging found on the front fender. Always looks good and it immediately tells you this car is of course outfitted to be a bit sportier than your standard IS300. Chrome window surrounds will come standard across the board as well. Taking a look at those side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors and they will actually come heated as well with LED integrated turn signals and they certainly look right at home. I'm glad they're body colored and not gloss black on the sides there. I do like the body colored side mirror look, but taking a look down at the wheel setup, 18 inch split five spoke F Sport specific alloy wheels will come standard on this one, but let me tell you guys, it is actually a staggered 
staggered fitment in case you were curious, meaning the rear tires, rear wheel setup is gonna be a little bit wider than the front wheels, meaning you can't rotate them, unfortunately. But as far as the sizing goes, it's 18 by eight inches up front, 18 by eight and a half inches in the back. Of course, with it being a sports sedan, that is typically found in just about all sports sedans out there, even if you go with the all wheel drive setup like we have today. But anyways, all wheel drive setup, by the way, will also give you all season tires, which makes sense, of course. But let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. First thing I wanted to mention to you guys is this rear spoiler that you were looking at right here. This is an added option for an additional $400 if you wanted to go that route. Just above that, of course, you have your shark fin antenna. LED taillights will also come standard back here along with F-Sport badging found in the lower left-hand corner of that trunk lid. And just below it all, dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back as far as opening that rear trunk there are a few ways to go about doing that there is of course a button on the key fob that is one way there's also a button by the driver's side left knee that is a second way and there is actually a rubberized button just underneath of the trunk above the license plate there on the right side of the trunk there that is the third way you can go about opening the is 300's trunk there but once opened up cargo capacity is going to come in at 10.8 cubic feet if that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space there if you needed it. Did want to also mention underneath the cargo floor back there, there is a spare tire in case anybody was curious there. Making your way to the rear legroom, that is going to come in at 32.2 inches, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but for reference, I am an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. For those rear passengers, they can also find a rear center armrest with cup holders. In addition to that, rear ventilation can be had back there as well, and that's something that doesn't always come standard in the size of this particular vehicle, so it is nice to definitely have that back there. But then make your way to the front seats, 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with power lumbar will come standard eight-way power adjustable passenger seat along with that that's definitely nice heated and ventilated front seats come standard with the is 300 f sport a lot of times the ventilated front seats will be an option like on audis typically so it is nice that it comes standard on the is 300 f sport here as far as the finish goes it comes finished in a new lux material lexus calls it it's very similar to leather but a little better i would say and you will have a few different colored finishes to that seating as well of course you have your black there's also a light tan and there is a Rioja red finish as well which of course is what we have today perhaps the best one but nonetheless they are the most comfortable seats seriously that exist right now after driving 450 ish cars these by far the most comfortable seats at least in my opinion and that, again that's any Lexus F Sport seats it doesn't matter if it's the IS the RC the NX whatever they are very comfortable, but take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. Very nice bolsters on it, a little thicker grip, so I do appreciate that. It will come leather wrapped standard, and you can get a heated steering wheel for only an additional $150, which we do have today. And that button, by the way, is located directly in front of the shifter there to go ahead and turn that on. But as far as the gauges go, speaking of turning things on, let me actually first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Lexus logo on the one side, and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again, that button to pop the rear hatch, but it is, of course, all keyless entry, so all I am going to do is simply leave the key in my pocket and put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is actually located just in between the infotainment screen and the gauges, so an interesting placement, and it's something Lexus does quite often, but it's different than a lot of other other manufacturers out there but nonetheless very nice gauge setup once started up LFA inspired actually if you guys remember Lexus's old supercar that went for over four hundred thousand dollars called the Lexus LFA that is where these gauges essentially came from and so to control what is on those gauges there are buttons found on the right side of the steering wheel there perhaps the coolest part about those gauges is the center circular part can slide to the left and the right by using the button on the steering wheel that looks like three rectangles essentially but 
When you do that, you can slide it to the left and the right. When it's all the way to the right, you have tons of different things you can check out, including your average miles per gallon, how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your G4 statistics, tire pressure monitoring system, of course. There's a compass, your radio settings, safety settings when you need your next oil change, and the list continues. So quite a bit of stuff you could check out there. And then, of course, when you slide it back to the middle, you have your standard fuel information, trip information, and your engine temp. So a very very impressive gauge display still to this day in my opinion so that's always good but touching on overall interior quality there is a power moonroof that will come standard with this one dual zoom climate control to go along with that i can't forget to mention the lexus analog clock front and center that always looks good black headliner will come standard and the coolest thing about this headliner is a very soft headliner it almost feels like suede, but it is not. I can tell it's not a suede finish, but it's super soft. So I definitely love this headliner. I don't know why I've been really into headliners lately, but I don't know, I'm weird. Aluminum foot pedals will come standard on this one as well. To go along with that, aluminum sill plates too. And as far as fit and finish goes, it definitely has a very unique design. Not many cars are set up the way Lexus is really all in all are set up. So it's very different and I like it. There's a lot of very specific accents that kind of look like Japanese paint Paper, I think they said in the past that's found just above the passenger side glove box and all around the center area as well So it's a very Japanese oriented car. I guess it is fully made in Japan a lot of cars these days are made everywhere But this is a fully 100% made in Japan car Which is kind of nice because you know the reliability is going to be there for that reason But one of the coolest things I like about the is 300 F sport is when you have the climate control on there are these two Lines on each side of the climate control options there. They don't look like buttons, but they are if you press them them, it'll actually increase or decrease the temperature but again they don't look like buttons it's kind of like a hidden way to adjust the climate control and I don't know how Lexus does it but it's freaking cool I will say that but of course just below that you have your heated and ventilated seat buttons just behind all of that you have two cup holders and of course a center armrest which actually has an auxiliary port two USB charging ports and a 12 volt power outlet found within that as well so that's definitely a plus too but home light controls can also be found for up to three different garage doors found just underneath that rear view mirror there but now I think let's get to the tech display front and center it is a seven inch display screen that comes standard I put it that way because we do have the optional 10.3 inch high resolution display screen today by the way that comes with either the navigation package or the mark levinson and navigation package but the navigation package that we have today goes for 1745 dollars so so because of that let me show you guys that real quick to control what is on that because it is not touch screen because honestly you couldn't reach it while you were driving anyways it is pretty darn far up there but to control what is on that there is kind of a mouse like device and a couple buttons just to the right of the shifter there and it is pretty simple to use and it's one of those things that you'll definitely get used to but what those buttons actually control on that screen are things like bluetooth and audio streaming you could check out your climate control information up there if you like some driving statistics as well but the one thing i really wish you could control up there just like you can on several other lexus models right now including the rc the two-door version of this essentially is android auto and apple carplay actually the IS still does not come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Perhaps next year it will. I have a funny feeling it definitely will next year. But for this model year, they have left it off the IS 300 and they have given it to several other Lexus models, but yet not the IS. Kind of interesting there, but nonetheless, factory navigation system will actually come with the 10.3 inch display screen, which essentially is probably what I would use it for anyways, but there is really a ton of stuff you can check out up there. It is a very high definition display screen as well, so that's always nice. You can also check out your radio settings, of course, and by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will find eight speakers that will come standard, and like I said previously, if you were to go with that navigation of Mark Levinson package that adds $2,845, you will find a 15 speaker Mark Levinson and surround sound system with 835 watts which is some serious awesomeness probably overkill for the size of this vehicle but serious awesomeness so you got that there but that of course is not the one we have today though so let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this eight speaker sound system that we have today we are actually gotta say I loved it. That was a perfectly fine sound system. Eight speakers is just fine for the size of this vehicle. Bass was certainly nice as well. So really, 
Mark Levinson is going to absolutely kill it, don't get me wrong, but that was a really good sound system actually for a standard sound system on any vehicle really, so well done Lexus. But so then last thing I wanted to mention to you guys is when you do put the IS in reverse, you will find of course a rear view camera letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, front side and side curtain airbags will come standard along with the driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also back there, rear child door locks and also some of the advanced safety features standard on the IS300 is going to be included in their safety system called Lexus Safety System Plus. And that is going to include pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane departure alert with lane keep assist, intelligent high beams, dynamic radar cruise control, and road sign assist as well. And to go along with that, another standard safety feature is blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert. And that's what I always look for these days. That's where the little car icons are in the side mirror, so it kind of prevents you from turning into somebody on the highway. It lets you know what's in your blind spots. That's pretty cool too. But in addition to that, there are some front and rear parking sensors available for an additional $500 if you wanted it. And so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold